Over the years, I have worked with many, many companies who sell their products and services through distributors. So manufacturers work through distributors. Publishers sell advertising to advertisers through agencies. Mutual funds sell to investors through wirehouses. Insurance carriers sell through brokers and agents. I've learned that when a company sells through distributors, which are also known as channel partners, resellers, agents, etc., not all distributors will be helpful, and the 80-20 rule is pretty consistent everywhere. Welcome to the Food for Thought Lunch Break with Steve Bookbinder podcast, the show that gives you things to think about when you're trying to make more sales without all the seriousness of conventional sales talks. Enjoy and learn as he makes fun of sales training, salespeople, and sales trainers, including himself, all while giving you battle-tested strategies that work. Now, here's your host, Steve Bookbinder. Hey, thanks for joining me on your break. I'm always looking for ways to get more sales easier. Turning your break into a coaching break is a great way for me to help you get more sales easier, too. Nothing says more sales easier than getting an echo to carry your message to more people than you can prospect to. But it's like someone threw a wet blanket on your echo when you don't begin with the right sounding message. Consider these two messages. Buy from me, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. One could imagine how that sound might travel far, not necessarily carrying the right message, but getting a lot more echoes than buy from me because our service will increase your productivity in a measurable ROI positive way. Buy from me because our service will increase your productivity in a measurably ROI positive kind of way. Buy from me. Clearly, that message is too muddy to get anywhere. But If it was shaped and delivered just right, it would echo many times and carry the right message. I know that you already know that. But the part you may be challenged by is the part where you apply that principle to your own sales pitch. Selling, like all professions, is not simply knowing what to do. It's doing what you know. Which is why we made getting your sales pitch to echo the topic of today's lunch break coaching session. Today, we'll discuss how to simplify your message to make it travel farther. Then I'll give you four action steps you can use to begin echoing your sales pitch this week. As always, let's begin with today's question. How can I get my sales pitch to echo? The short answer is simplify your message. The slightly longer answer uncouples the echo analogy from your sales pitch for just a moment. Real echoes are sound waves which bounce off solid surfaces. The solid surface doesn't have any opinions. It doesn't selectively decide not to echo certain messages. But humans are more like boulders of wet blankets, echo-wise. The surface holds on to sounds like a person keeping a secret, but... People echo secrets and sales pitches under the right circumstances. We choose to echo when we are reassured about others and desire to be on the front end of messaging we trust, and when the wording is simple enough to repeat. One word alone can trigger our instinct to echo. Your customer could be sitting in their weekly operations meeting and someone mentions a problem using the same word yesterday's salesperson used in their memorable sales pitch. Suddenly, the customer is inclined to be on the front end of the messaging. It makes them look good to say, hey, I've got a possible solution to the problem we're discussing. I just talked to a salesperson yesterday who told me, boom, echo. I have observed hundreds of pitches with customers in live and video meetings, as well as call monitoring and email analysis. And I've observed thousands of people perform their pitch in workshops during role plays. Role plays, you say, that's not real, really. Like real life, it's performance under pressure. And when we're under pressure, we fall back on what we know and probably do in sales meetings. 
Most salespeople's role plays of their sales pitch will not echo because they don't encourage wet blankets to reflect sound. To me, most role plays sound like this. Thanks for agreeing to today's appointment. I'm just curious. Why did you agree to today's appointment? What keeps you up at night? Tell me about your pain points. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, then. Now let me tell you about us. We offer a comprehensive and specialized proprietary service which is customizable. It's got all the efficiencies of a SaaS solution with an intuitive user interface that's user-friendly, plus a managed solution that's second to none. We work with large, very large, multinational, and intergalactic clients, as well as small businesses, solo practitioners, and people only thinking of entering this business. In other words, we're right for everyone. We have too many use case success stories for me to go into now, but I'd be happy to send you some links if you want to check them out on your own time. Companies buy from us because we increase their productivity and efficiency, empowering customers to overcome obstacles, reach benchmarks, and exceed their very aggressive targets. If you had a magic wand and could create the perfect solution, you would end up creating our service. So, what do you think? Does this sound like something you could use? By any chance, do you have a budget? And can you tell me the decision-making process? Usually, I end these soundbite examples by adding, well, not in those words or words to that effect. Sadly, today, I'm not exaggerating. Hardly any salespeople have a better pitch from an echo perspective. Why? Because the wet blanket covered customers would, under no occasion, ever find themselves in a situation where your words would be shared with another. Maybe this one possibility. Your customer and the company president find themselves trapped on a broken elevator for 12 hours awaiting a rescue. They talk about everything, especially revisiting the conversation about when the rescuers will finally get there already. Eventually, the president asks... Hey, I know something we haven't talked about yet. Have you spoken to any interesting salespeople lately? Since we have time, tell me what they said. Apart from hoping for that kind of echo, let's reconsider how we ended up coming up with our sales pitch in the first place. This is the place where I once again have to throw common sales training advice under the bus. We've all been told the recipe of making a good pitch. Start with features, who we are, what we do, add corresponding benefits. To me, people proof, the use case success stories of your customers, enjoying your benefits to achieve their goals is way more important than either features or benefits. But most salespeople I meet either don't know their own success stories or don't tell their stories very well. Maybe you also add some metric proof in the form of numbers of customers or years of service or awards won or everyone's favorite ROI. Combined in that order, you have what managers and trainers call a value proposition. Add a price and you have a proposal. Here's why it's now under the bus. You can't echo that kind of pitch. From the customer's point of view, the only kinds of things they echo are the problems they are facing, the solutions that are working, and the next solutions they'll need. Let me give you an example. Over the years, I've worked with many, many companies who sell their products and services through distributors. So manufacturers work through distributors. Publishers sell advertising to advertisers through agencies. Mutual funds sell to investors through wirehouses. Insurance carriers sell through brokers and agents. I've learned that when a company sells through distributors, which are also known as channel partners, resellers, agents, etc., not all distributors will be helpful, and the 80-20 rule is pretty consistent everywhere. 20% of the distributors will give you 80% of your sales. 80% of the distributors make more money from another manufacturer. 80% of the distributor salespeople are not trained enough to sell the manufacturer's products. 
So, my pitch to companies who sell through channel partner distributors reflects my understanding of their business and my best guess as to which problem they're probably looking to solve. My pitch sounds like this. Our training specifically addresses the usual needs of channel sales, acknowledging and rewarding your top tier distributors by investing in them, getting mind share from the 80% of the distributors who make more money from other manufacturers, increasing wallet share from the 20% who do buy now. In other words, I use the words the customer uses to describe their own problems. I solve the issues they recognize. They're more reassured when I use their terms because it sounds like I understand their complex business arrangements and get their problems. My combination of confidence and word choice makes it easy for them to echo my pitch when they're in a meeting and familiar words come up, the ones I just used in yesterday's meetings. Words like, hey, how are we going to get more wallet share or more mind share? When those words come up, They remember my sales pitch. The trick, if you will, is considering the likely problem that your customer is trying to solve. So here are some examples. If you're selling to a commercial bank, they probably want to solve for getting their customers to get three accounts called relationships with each customer because customers with three relationships are less likely to move their money to another bank. Can your solution help them do that? If you're selling advertising to a personal injury lawyer, they're probably trying to reduce their click cost on Google, which can be accomplished with many advertising strategies apart from paid search. So are you able to describe how your solution would do that? If you're selling to a hospital, then you need to solve for how to attract better doctors and nurses. If you're selling to airlines, then you need to solve for how do they keep their fleet in the air longer. In each case, I'm guessing their hottest hot button, but I'm beginning with a safe bet. The problem I mentioned is at least in their top two or three. I'm betting that the person I would reach out to at these organizations will find themselves in meetings with coworkers discussing these problems, putting them in a better position to echo my sales pitch. Here's a summary of today's coaching session. To get your solution to echo, use their words in your pitch. Don't simply rely on classic sales training advice for pitching, listing features and benefits, and then hoping the customer spots the connection between their problems and your solution. Instead, think about the person you want to echo your pitch. Under what conditions are they in a position to discuss their problems and solutions internally with their coworkers, including the people who could possibly approve decisions and budgets for new solutions? In those conversations, what words do they use to discuss and describe their problems and challenges and goals? Research and brainstorm with your team to make educated guesses about your customers. Then rewrite your pitch, starting with the problem the customer is likely working on. To get an echo, your pitch must fit into the conversations that your customers are having when you're not in the room. When that happens, they are more inclined to echo your pitch to the right people at the right time. Here are four actions you can take this week to start that echoing process. A. Brainstorm with the right people. Try to list the main problem each of your customers are likely facing. If you have no idea, start with online research. If you get really stuck, ask me, and I will provide you the likely problems for any business you are targeting. B. Role play your pitch. When you can execute the delivery of your message perfectly with all of the distractions of sales meetings, especially when you're nervous, then you're ready to echo. That takes a lot of practice, but all worth it. C. A mirror is a good concept, but for real feedback, you need a coach who can give you feedback on your pitch. Find someone you can trust to give you feedback. If no one comes to mind, contact me. I can evaluate your pitch. D. Continue to learn how to echo your pitch by scheduling time for our next lunch break coaching session. Over the next few weeks, we'll alternate between talking about echo selling with interviews with sales and digital marketing leaders.
Until next time, remember, I'm Steve Bookbinder, your sales coach. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. Check out our free playbooks and training and coaching offerings on dmtraining.net. And contact me ASAP if I can help your team get more sales or help you have a more successful sales career. Thank you for listening to Food for Thought. To get your free sales playbook, visit dmtraining.net forward slash podcast. And be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of Steve's jokes and helpful resources. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.